don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's back here. So it's time for the last mid-month mini mission inspiration over on our Facebook group. That's the URL on the screen just there. Um, so this is the last mini mission for 2021. In fact, it's the last mission completely for 2021. Um, so we'll be back in 2022 with a brand new raft of um, main monthly missions plus mid-month minis too, done in a slightly different format. Um, so the mid-month mission for December is stars. So let me turn over to my other camera and show you the prompt card and what I'm going to create. Okay, so this is my tag journal that I've been doing all of the mid-month mini mission inspirations in over the past year. So time to do the last one. Um, if you're interested, I still have some of the MDF um, and acrylic tag journal sets still in stock. So if you haven't ordered yours for next year, I still have some in. I ordered more. So, um, so grab your order in now. Obviously you won't get it in time for Christmas, but Hopefully I'll be able to get it out to you as soon as I possibly can in time for the mid-months in January. So wherever you are in the world. Um, okay, so I've already cut out my tag using the acrylic front. That bit. Um, using that as the template for my tag. And I'm just using, again, um, some cardboard from um, some Mr. Bentley food. So there's the prompt. So we've got stars. So we've got Christmas stars, twinkling stars, a galaxy of stars, or a film or music star of your choice. So there's plenty much to go, plenty much to go out there. Forget my own English now. Um, there's lots to go out. There's much you can do. So let me just pop the prompt card to one side for a second. So like I said, I've got a piece of cardboard from um, some dog food packaging and I've cut a piece of black card that I'm just going to stick over the top and again I've used the covers as my template and I'm just going to cover the back in, um, in glue. There we go, and just do the back of the tag and then we can get cracking on doing the front. So decorate the back first and then just slide that over the top. Now I'm doing this because um, it's slightly bigger and I will trim it off later on. But I'm going to paint the front of the tag with black gesso. But I didn't want to paint the back. Um, I just wanted to put some black card on. So I've got some black gesso, give it a shake up. I'm not even waiting for it to dry on the back, so it'll all dry together. Um, a kitchen roll and a brush. Got some brushes in some water here, which I really should have cleaned before starting this, but it seems to be using black, it doesn't make any difference. It's not really that critical to have clean water because we are using black. Let's use the lid first. So just do a quick coat of black gesso all the way over. I think one coat of black gesso should be enough, theoretically, because we're doing it onto craft card, it should kind of soak in um, and I'm not particularly bothered if it's a complete even coating either. Um, if there's variations in the background intensity, then that's okay. But gesso tends to dry really, really quickly anyway. So being able to get it exactly flat matte um, is it's nigh and impossible, but hey ho. Right, so there's the cover, that's the front get it dried really quickly and then I'll be back. Shouldn't take long because gesso does not take long to dry at all. Okay so while that cover's drying I'm still going to leave the, the gesso out. And I've got here 
from my stash some um, some cast resin stars um, from one of the Finnebear sets. Um, not stars, moons, moons and stars. Nocturne, nocturnal. I'm not really sure what was, what the set was called, but so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give these a quick coating over. Again, I'm not going to go mad. You know, making sure that I've got a total full matte coating with the gesso because these this isn't going to be the final colour so I'm not particularly um what's it fussed I'm I'm not gonna be very OCD about it if you pardon the expression I'm not wanting to offend anybody with OCD but you know what I mean particular there you go that's the word I'm looking for particular I'm not being too particular about it so just make sure that there's a little bit of a coating or general coating of the black gesso over all of those items. And then we're going to leave those to dry. That will do, I think. Making sure I've got no fingers, finger marks in. It's another clean job. A bit messy which is fine don't mind getting a bit messy for the mission inspirations and then we've got one of those lovely kind of barn star types so it's nice to have a bit of variation in these stars so right I shall just carry on doing all this lot and then I know I've nearly finished but I'll just whip to the end and then we can get cracking on the rest of it Okay, so got those all painted and dried. Just had a quick clean up. So what I want to do now, just before I get on to doing the main, is I want to just have a go and put the colour onto these items. So what I've got is I've got some lustre waxes. I've got two different colours. I've got silver and I've got gold. These are the Sizzix Lustre Wax. I've still got the price on that silver one, look. They weren't cheap, but they do last a long, long time. Um, so it's well worth the investment, if you ask me. So I've got silver and gold, like I said. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the silver first, and I'm gonna just take a little bit onto the top of my brush like that and I'm going to just go over those stars in this luster wax it smells lovely as you can imagine it smells exactly like you'd think it would do it's almost like a like a fruity smell to it almost like a lemon smell with this wax glorious as we say here in the UK or particularly in Yorkshire it's really nice so this was the barn star one slightly different to the others don't mind having a little bit of a variation now if you like your luster waxes like me um, and then you use them onto a craft mat like this and then it dries onto the craft mat it's very difficult to get off um, after you've finished. Here's a tip. Um, alcohol or surgical spirits usually lifts it off. Um, rubbing alcohol, surgical spirits, or if you haven't got any of those, um, if, you've, if you wear spectacles and you buy those wipes for cleaning your glasses, usually they've got alcohol on them. So you can use one of those spectacles wipes for cleaning your your wax off your mat. Just in case you didn't know. Um, the other way of doing it, of course, is just if you've got some cheap perfume 
or aftershave if you're a chap. Um, that normally also contains alcohol. So, and of course, if you haven't got any cheap aftershave or perfume that contains alcohol, then you can just use alcohol. Obviously, the cheaper the better. <laughs> In this instance. Okay, so there's the moon. Now I'm putting the silver on the moon as well, but just because I can, I'm going to add a little bit of gold on that too. Not a huge amount, just a little, just to kind of warm that moon up. So it'll just give it a little bit of a warm effect. Just lightly. Hopefully the camera's picking up the difference. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm sure the pictures at the end will. I've just broken the brush. <laughs> a little bit more on the inside. Just kind of get like a warmer tone on the inside and then colder on the outer. That's fine. Okay so I think they're the same lids on both aren't they? Oh no, there's a rim, there's a coloured rim. It tells me what colour is supposed to go on what. Right, okay, so those are the bits. Those are the, uh, a few of the hairs from the brush. So I need to get this cleared up and then I'll be right back and we'll start using some other bits. Get my fingers now. So that's a standard wet wipe. You can see it's not coming off. So now it will. Just need a little bit of a time just to work its way in. Okay, so just remember if you are going to spray alcohol around through a spritzer like that, make sure you've got well ventilated room because it really does get to your head. Um, next off, I'm going to add some colour. So that's the back with the paper and that's the back with the gesso. So I've got some Vivid sprays from Indigo Blue. These are metallic mica spritzers, they're airless spritzers um, so there's no tube to get clogged up um, and they've got mica in them and this one is blue satin sashes so I'm going to spritz over the top with that blue this is the reason why I put the kitchen roll down because it gets um, it gets everywhere so right I need to just get that dry I've just cleaned off the nozzle I'll get the gun on that and then I'll be right back okay so that's the blue now I've allowed it to run so you get those kind of rivulets that work the way through so that was the blue satin sashes so this next colour is called Perfectly Precious Purple. Uh, I wonder what colour that could be. So we'll give that a spritz as well. Uh, 
and we'll do exactly the same thing again, just clean the nozzle off before we put it away. And we'll give that a nice dry and I'm going to allow that to run just the same way that I did with the blue. Okay, so I've got some nice tones of purple in there as well as the blue. Now I want to warm it up a little bit, I don't want it to be too bluey cold. So I'm going to add a little bit of gold in there now. So this next colour is called A Drop of Golden Sun. So I'm not going to go mad with this. I'm just going to do some ref refined kind of droplets. Going slowly, which makes the droplets bigger you can see. So when that dries, the gold should start to show through. Okay, so let me just show you the gold on there now. So this next one is called Raindrops on Roses and this is kind of a red colour. I don't want to go too mad with this one because it is there we go. Kind of a deep colour. Okay, so that's the red. You can see all the different kind of colours in that now. But just to finish off, I just want to go back in with a bit more of that blue. There we go. That'll do. Lovely. Right, so now we've got that. You can see the nice shiny kind of metallic background. So the last thing that I want to do is just bring out some paint. There it is. That's the one I'm after. Snow White. So this is a metallic white paint, again from Indigo Blue. We're sticking with the same company all the way through. That's nice and thick. So I'll just give my brush a quick wipe off. I'm going to take some of that white metallic -y paint, get a little spritz of water, I need to bother with too much, that's probably maybe a bit more I need. Again, we're working mostly with metallics on these. So, here we go. And then let's just add a little bit of a starry background. And that should do. I'm hoping that's going to stay, <laughs> not disappear into the background. Okay, uh, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, there's a hundred and dif 101 different ways to achieve the same effect. Uh, there are lots and lots of different ways to achieve a kind of galaxy effect. This is just the way that I like to do it, using a metallic medium. If you didn't want a lot of metallic, then you could just use ordinary matte sprays, if that's what you're into. Um, but if you like a little bit of sparkle, like I do occasionally, then this is the way to go. But look at that. It could almost be a photograph from the Hubble Space Telescope, couldn't it? <laughs> Love it. Right, so we're going to come back now with our um, moon and stars, which is what we started off with. And I'm just going to go around now. I probably or may not end up using all of them, um, depending on spacing. So I'm just going to position these around the tag and yeah I think actually we might not end up using that band star at all. Let's move that one down there and this one there. I think actually that's probably going to be enough. So I don't think we're going to use that one at all. I'll just put that to one side and maybe use it later. But that I like. I like the position of that. So I'm going to stick them down using glossy accents if I can persuade the hole to stay open, 
which it never does on these bottles, even when you try and burp them. And even the needles, oh, the needle ends come out. Not having much fun today, am I? Not much luck. No, I'm having fun, just not having much luck. Right, is that going to come out now? No, I still need to go further. I should have a dedicated glossy accent opening needle. Are you going to come out now? Yes, lovely. Okay, so we'll start with the little one. Add a little bit of glossy accents just onto the back. Obviously, glossy accents does make a fantastic glue. And we'll just drop that down there. Next one. Go on here. And then if you have the moon. And I'll run a bead of glue just down there. Make sure we've got enough room for that star to sit. And then that one. Let's do a wee dollop. And then finally the big one at the top. Give it a wiggle, give it a wiggle. Already started to grip. Perfect. Okay, so let's give that a wipe. That's it, I should burp the bottles before putting it away. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes to dry and I'll be right back. Okay, so they're pretty much in place now. So for the last time this year, I just want to sweep that over so that I can pop the hole in for the tag. <laughs> and I just knocked one of them off just popped right off there look oh that's just gone into my lap oh, lovely I obviously didn't put enough glossy accents in that one right let's just add a bit more in there we go because they're dimensional that's gonna hold it now I'm going to have to leave that again for another couple of minutes. So I'll have a quick tidy up. Now we've got the hole in for um, to add it back into the journal, but I also still need to stick this into the back. So back in a few minutes. Okay, so we're all pretty much dry now. So all I have to do now is just to write in there check that I have the right spell in then. Get some glue and then we can wax some glue on the back. That should do us. And then if I remember which way it goes on, just turn that over. And then that can now go onto the back of the tag. So we've got, that was November's, and then we had, that's the other way around. Oh, that's also come off there. Where's that come from? I wonder. Possibly on there. Who can say? But anyway, so 
that now I think is ready to go and join the rest in the journal for the final time this year. There we go. So that's it. So that's my December mid-month mini mission inspiration with the prompt being stars. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me put that together, even if I was a little bit incomprehensible. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh dear, it's all that dust in my room. Um, yeah, so if you have enjoyed it, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. So that's it for 2021 as far as the mission inspirations are concerned. Um, the mission inspiration for January will be a little bit later this year um, because the first Saturday of January falls on January the 1st. And I don't think I'm going to be in any fit state to be doing any crafting or artwork on New Year's Day. So I've put it back to the to, to following Saturday. It's only for January. Um, going forward into February, March and all the rest of it, it will be the first Saturday in each month. But just for January, it'll be on the 8th. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.